an era in which we are questioning the effectiveness of markets in producing the kind of society and economy we want to live in, it is more important than ever to have an objective debate about the role that markets and the state play in the economy. Is the state necessary only to correct market failures, or is it also needed to more actively shape and create markets and technological opportunities, and to promote growth which is not only smart, but also inclusive? There are a number of lessons that uh, we can learn from the crisis about how we execute fiscal policy. One thing that we do know is that five years after the great financial crisis, the uh, labor markets are decimated in uh, the Western world. In the United States in particular, we see still very high unemployment rates, um, a very huge drop in labor force participation, employment to population ratios, really, really disturbing employment trends that have been brewing for many decades, and yet um, five years uh, of what is considered aggressive government action still has, uh, have not uh, delivered uh, good employment outcomes. And so really we could ask ourselves a very fundamental question. Does the manner in which the government goes about uh, stabilizing an unstable economy matter for employment outcomes? And you know, my argument is that it very much matters how we execute fiscal policy and that what we today um, consider to be Keynesian macroeconomic stabilization is really based on a misreading of Keynes and a greater emphasis on this type of uh, pump priming approach and hydraulic Keynesianism where just boosting demand is sufficient to deliver um, the, the needed results. And that is, that is indeed a, a, a misreading of Keynes who very specifically spoke about directed investment, but more importantly importantly than that, he spoke of um, what I call on-the-spot employment, in other words, direct employment, for a number of reasons. But uh, if we take back, uh, you know, take a step back and look at how uh, government uh, policy functions, you could argue that it functions in this, you know, top-down, trickle-down uh, approach. And I don't just mean trickle-down in the way we normally think of fiscal policy by cutting top marginal tax rates in hope to stabilize investment and then employment, but also through priming the pump. And, and aggregate demand management is a type of trickle-down um, economics because it is basically a pro-investment, pro-growth model where we are hoping to generate requisite growth that will produce or requisite investment or innovation or growth that will then produce the employment outcomes. And employment is always at the end of the chain of the analysis. We are always target, targeting these other objectives and we hope that the wonderful byproduct of those policies will be strong employment. employment. Whereas I think a, a, a proper reinterpretation of the original sort of Keynesian message and Minskian message, etc., is in fact to have pro-employment policies that will lead to sustainable growth, um, public greater public investment, and on and on. So we, we have to flip the, the approach uh, by targeting employment um, in, uh, in a very direct fashion for the public purpose uh, that will then trickle up and generate demand um, throughout the rest of the economy. There are a number of reasons why the conventional model uh, has failed. Uh, first, of course, we have uh, technological innovation. The change of the structure of the economy uh, has led to a lot of high wage, high employment, high tech growth. And what in the private sector ends up happening whenever we boost demand for private product, private uh, investment spending, it is always the employment conditions of those who are high skilled, highly employed that improve first. And only then demand from those workers may trickle down in the form of demand for product for low skill low wage workers. And of course, demand never really trickles far down enough. Um, uh, the problem with this approach is that uh, it actually erodes income inequality. Uh, you, uh, 
uh, you are improving the labor conditions of those who tend to experience the least precarious employment conditions. Whereas the job of the public sector as a stabilizer should be precisely the opposite, not to mimic the employment uh, trends that you observe in the private market, but in, in other words, to offset them. So uh, a proper employment strategy or safety net would be in the form of direct employment, targeted employment, for those who experience the most precarious uh, employment situation, the longest spell of unemployment, the deepest decline in employment, and tend to be those at the bottom of the income distribution, low skill, low age. So fiscal policy has to be rethought in very broad terms. Number one, what is the job of the public sector in stabilizing a macroeconomy? We have been very successful in stabilizing profits, uh, and indeed profits are at record levels, but we have not been as successful in stabilizing employment conditions. So in broad terms, what is the function of fiscal policy? Labor markets, better income distribution, better social provisioning have to be part of the equation. Then what is that comprehensive strategy to achieve those goals? Uh, public investment um, will have to be part of that recipe, but also very specifically dealing with the employment conditions of those at the very, very bottom of the income distribution has to be part and parcel of this uh, approach. Because failure to deal with the unemployment problem over the short term uh, will necessarily lead to failure in dealing with it over the long run, because unemployment breeds unemployability and long-term unemployment and these are trends that we have seen develop long before the great financial crisis. So in other words, it, we really have to rethink the role of the state in fiscal policy where we, we put employment, better income distribution, and, and public service at the center. Mm -hmm.